Just before we get started, I just wanted to share my thoughts and uh, prayers with everyone down in Virginia and what their program and their university is going through. Um, super tragic as a as a parent, as a coach. You just you never want to hear anything like that. So um, thoughts with them as as we move into the week. The, uh, I mean, you know, Ryan's obviously been playing well the last several weeks, but that situation seemed to be particularly, you would assume, stressful. You know, the false starts and then the uh, you know, timeout you know, after he drills a 45 yarder. Um, how was he during those? How was it? Were you watching him during that whole thing? And how did he handle that situation? You know, Ryan's confidence has grown um, as, as the last few weeks have unfolded. Uh, he's he's kicked the ball well in practice, kicked the ball well in the game. So um, you can see him growing in confidence, and and I think um, I don't think that phased him. I, actually, I kind of think he enjoyed the moment a little bit, um, you know. And then I don't know if if it's something that was noticed, um, but you know, even some of our players after he made the the kick that where the timeout was called, um, kind of came out and they were they're kind of cheering them on defensive players, guys who had, had really nothing going in, in, involved in the play. Um, so I think he feels the, the, the support of the team. And I think that camaraderie and that support and, and the confidence that he's gained has helped him. And, uh, you know, like, like I said, um, you know, a few weeks back, you know, we believe in him and, and we think, you know, he has all the talent and ability to be a really good player. And I'm, I'm just glad that it's starting to show and, and reflect for him. And he's, he's able to finish this year, hopefully, in a way that, that is a very solid finish and a good lesson for a lot of people to learn in terms of staying the course and, and continuing to work. And good things will happen. Uh, the onside kick coming out of half. I know is that A Z who maybe is that feels like a a, a kind of real life lessons the failures learning from those putting them into action. I guess is that get a, a fist pump from you on the sideline seeing it play out like that? Uh, no question. You know I was I was happy for A Z. Um, you know and. and I loved his response just to, to his experience that he had a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, the, the Georgia Tech one, um, you know, he kind of waited on the ball a little bit. And, uh, you know, this one he went and attacked it. And, and that was exactly, you know, what we had talked about in terms of what the correction needed to be. And uh, our guys were really in tune to it. You know, obviously at halftime and then, and then before we took the field, um, you know, the reminders were going out that this is a potential situation where you could see an onside kick. Um, but in this case, even the players were reminding each other prior to, to me even having to say anything. So um, I, I just think that, you know, as the, the year has gone on, the maturity and, and the uh, the understanding and the recognition of, of the moments that we're in, guys are doing such a good job with that. And, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was happy to see um, you know that we were able to execute in that moment, and then you know really it was a, it was a critical play in the game because it, it gave us starting field position. Um, our offense was able to go right down and score, and then you know f if you're on that other sideline, that has to be a deflating deflating moment coming out of the half. So uh, I thought that was a critical sequence in the game, and um, I was happy for Az that he could could go and make that play. Co Coach Fuller said that um, he thought Friday's practice might have been the fastest you guys have. Practiced uh, and 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 Coach Norvell was talking about the last couple of weeks, just the focus and the the determination this team has had. Uh, when when you see a team developing that, and I'm sure you've been part of teams that have developed that as well. Um, how, as a coach, is it kind of do you have? It's got to be fun to some degree, but then like, how do you manage that when they're getting to that level? Like managing that part of the process. Well, you know, I, the the thing that you see with this group is is a very um, a very, I guess the right way to phrase it would be a business-like approach to everything that they're doing. You know, that, and, and I don't mean that like they're not having fun and there's no enthusiasm with it. There's a lot of fun and a lot of enthusiasm with it. But when they show up to work, they're working. And, um, you know, I think, I think that shows that guys are, are learning what it takes to win. And, and that's one of the hurdles that, that you have to, to overcome um, as you're building a program is, is learning what is it that it, does it take to, to actually have consistent success. And the approach that we've had the last several weeks has been really good. Friday was was excellent, and, and it's it, there's all kinds of little things, you know, even like a pregame meal, for example. Um, you know, we we have pregame meals set at a certain time, and as a position coach, you get all your guys down there. You know, at this point, like guys are sitting in their seat for a meal 15 minutes before the meal even starts. Like they're ready to go. Um, there is no you know chasing guys around and trying to find out where guys are. I mean, 
it's a locked in group that is is absolutely ready to go and um, you know it, it's fun from a coaching standpoint because um, you know you you want you want to have a group that has that maturity about them and um, you know we just got to keep building on it as we move forward and I think you touched a little bit on that there, Coach, but you know, you've been around a lot of big time football programs in your career and, and the camaraderie and the togetherness of this team. I know it's maybe not littered with a whole bunch of NFL first round picks, but I mean just how special is this group of guys and have you ever been around something where you see so many guys buying into everyone's success and being happy for each other? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, this team uh, is is an extremely close team, and and I think those bonds are forged um, through the off season, through the summer, through fall camp, and then into some of the, the things that happen throughout the course of a season. You know, one of the things that that um, I've always admired about this group is even when we have had our disappointing moments, there's never been the finger pointing, there's never been the blame game, there's never been any of that. Um, if anything, those difficult situation has forged us tighter together. And I do think that's why, you know, one of the reasons why you see the response that you've seen the last several weeks coming off the bye is a group of guys that, that care about each other, they, they, uh, they want to see each other's success. I mean, I think one of the things that, that like, I that I haven't seen at a lot of places is the defense's reaction to the offense scoring points or making plays. I mean, you got guys running off the bench to go congratulate offensive players. And um, I hear that the offensive players and the defense is on the field kind of echoing um, some of the counting out the takeaways or third down stops. I mean, it has it's that team mindset has has taken over this this group. And, um, you know, that when you have that, it can be very special, and very powerful. Yeah, um, Pat Payton, you know, second straight week with sack, third straight week with the tackle for a loss. So um, how, what have you seen in his growth, you know, especially as we're going, closing this, um, going to the closing stretch of the season? What have you seen from him? Yeah, you know, he just, you know, Pat's a guy that, um, you know, he works every day. Um, he's very humble in terms of his approach. He's very coachable. Um, and, and for those reasons, he continues to, to make progress. He knows he's nowhere near a finished pro uh, product in any way. Um, so, you know, every single day when he shows up to work, um, he has that mindset that it's to get better. And I think that's why we've seen con consistency in his play. Um, you know, when he has opportunities to make plays, he takes advantage of them. He did it the other night. And, uh, you know, I, over the next couple of weeks, continue to see him grow and get better. And um, hopefully that springboards him going into to what will be his redshirt sophomore campaign. Somebody else requested that I ask this, so if you don't like it, it's not my fault. But uh, the missed field goal, um, Ryan and Alex, are they going to be all right? Were they auditioning for the longest yard part three, or like what happened there? Yeah, you know, it's it's that's I mean, what obviously my eyes once the contact of the kick made went to to see uh, if he made the kick or not, um, and then I just see them both on the ground. So my assumption was that they were probably run into pretty hard. Turns out that maybe that wasn't necessarily the case, but um, you know they did their best, I guess, to to sell it a little bit. Um, you know, it's not really something we practice. Obviously, um, does not look practice, but uh, the uh, they did they did the best they could, I guess. Something we need to work on. <laughs> you were uh, before the season. I think one of the things you talked about losing Jermaine and Kier was just how smart they were, how much experience they were. Um, how is that? I mean, obviously, Derek and Leonard have been around for a while, and Derek's played some football. Um, but some of those guys haven't played a ton. Like, how far has that come during the season? Yeah, I mean, we've come a we've come a long way in terms of our execution and understanding. Um, you know, I think Derek McClendon is a guy, and I'll use him as an example. Um, you know, our first year, there was a lot of things he was learning, and then last year, he he was starting to grow as a, as a big picture understanding as a player. And then this year, I think he's as consistent in terms of assignment execution as as anybody that, that we've had in, at that spot in this program. Um, and that's really true across the board. I mean, guys are doing a nice job in terms of execution and assignments, um, understanding how the protections are working and, and how we need to attack protections. Um, you know, we have a, you know, I think we have a smart defensive line room and uh, the execution up front has been really good, just not physically, but also executing in terms of assignments and, and the mental part of the game. You know, we, we put a lot of stress on those guys in terms of uh, how we execute our different line stunts or a couple times they're in coverage. Um, and, and I thought we did a nice job of that the other night. And, and we've done a nice job of that, you know, throughout the course of the year. 
one last one. Uh, Patrick, um, I know he said earlier in the year he's had to work on finishing some of those plays. You know, and how, how far has he come in that area in terms of when he gets a shot at the quarterback, actually getting the guy? Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, he, had, he had a couple of plays that he felt like uh, he missed opportunities on the first several games that he played in. And, uh, you know, it, it bugged him a little bit. Um, you know, and those things, those things are going to happen. I mean, that's part of the development and growth process. Um, but I would say in the, in the last couple of weeks specifically, um, he's done a really nice job of finishing plays. I mean, the other day, uh, being an example, you know, he was unblocked on a pressure. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you still have to finish the play. And, uh, you know, he did a nice job with that. He did a nice job in the Miami game of, of reaching over, forcing the strip. Um, so where he was close before, now those plays are turning out being finished plays. And, um, you know, it, we always say this is a game of, of inches, and um, that's a great example of it.